Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. If you were expecting to hear me talk about David Letterman today, I have postponed that episode to a week from today. Today, we will celebrate the life of Louis Anderson, who passed away yesterday. I just, first of all, always try to get a laugh first when you're writing something. And then if you can make a point, that's always great. And I think that's kind of a Minnesota thing. Well, what does it mean? What are you trying to do with it? Does it matter to you? I always ask comics, does your material matter to you? Because if it doesn't matter to you, why w- why should it matter to me as an audience member? On Twitter, Pat Oswalt. God, this year, this month, what is happening? Gilbert Gottfried shared a photo of Gilbert, Louis Anderson, and Bob Saget. Gilbert captioned it, this photo is very sad now. Both good friends that will be missed. Jeff Ross, the roast master, joked about Louis Anderson dying shortly after Meatloaf. When Meatloaf died, Louis Anderson was like, what's the point of living? I love them both. Kathleen Madigan said, grateful I got to say goodbye. Loved him like a brother, my Midwest king. George Wallace tweeted, heaven has a hell of an open mic going on right now. Mark Marin, R.I.P. Louis Anderson, a true comedy craftsman, a funny, authentic, sweet man. Adam Sandler, damn, such a funny, great guy, made us all laugh so much, loved him, condolences to his whole family. The Sklar Brothers, R.I.P. Louis Anderson, one of the sweetest, open-hearted, brilliantly funny people in the business. His was the first show we ever did stand-up on in 1998, and despite his much-deserved success in baskets, both critically and popularly, he would always shift the focus onto others. Jim Gaffigan, I feel so lucky that I knew you, Louis Anderson. So funny, so gentle. You were always encouraging. A Midwestern big brother from another big Midwestern family in this crazy business. You conquered stand-up, writing, and most recently, we fell in love with your acting in Baskets. Michael McKeon praised Louis' role in Baskets, calling it a phenomenal second act. I wish he had gotten a third. And Henry Winkler said that Louis' generosity of spirit will cover the world from above. The National Comedy Center tweeted, Few comedians have found success in so many of comedy's arenas, from stand-up sitcoms and animation to game shows, reality shows, and feature film. Louis Anderson made his mark on the art form in wide-ranging ways and gifted us all with comedy that definitely ranged from hilarious to poignant. Anderson will be revered for years to come as someone who regularly and publicly challenged ideas about what comedy is and for the empathy and grace he showed his peers and audiences alike. The San Diego Union Tribune interviewed Louis in 2019. They asked how his family influenced his comedy. Louis said, my brother Roger was the funniest outwardly. He was always known to tell two, three, four jokes every time you saw him. He was much funnier than I was. He influenced me quite a bit. So when did you decide to become a comedian? I never was going to be a comedian. I did this on a dare. We were at a comedy club. I said, these guys aren't funny. And my friend said, if you think you're so funny, why don't you sign up for next week? So I went to the guy and I said, when do you do this again? Next Friday. So I went down there. That was October 10th, 1978. Mickey Finn's in North Minneapolis. Here I am. Louis, what did you learn from your early mentor, Henny Youngman? Henny's work ethic had the biggest influence on me. He said, just do your jokes. But I was more of a person that wanted to tell stories. I didn't want to just present jokes, but I did have a bunch of one-liners when I started my act each time. I got that from him and his work ethic. The funniest guy I ever saw was Jack Benny. I love that he underplayed everything, much like my mom. Bob Hope was a huge influence on me. When I'm loud in my act, I'm definitely doing Bob Hope. I just loved his timing. Rodney Dangerfield just had so many jokes, and they were so good. I'm always trying to write the best Louis Anderson Rodney joke I can. Once, I saw Richard Pryor perform. I wanted to do more stuff from my heart, really open up and try to do stuff that bordered on sad, really funny, but tragic at the same time. Louis made his debut on Johnny Carson's Tonight Show on November 20th, 1984. He told the San Diego Union Tribune, I'd been practicing. When I got to L.A., I had nine Tonight Shows prepared already. I really wanted to be on the Tonight Show. I knew that I was Tonight Show material. I just felt it. I walked out and killed it. I was very prepared. I even did an ad lib off Johnny's monologue. Johnny talked about how McDonald's had just changed its sign to say a billion people served. I walked out and I said, I was just at McDonald's and that sign changed again. I know Johnny really appreciated that. I was done. I took a bow, went behind the curtain. I'm walking to my dressing room. They start yelling at me, Johnny wants you back out there. Get out there. So I ran back and went out there. He called me over, shook my hand, made me take another bow. That's when I knew I'd done a good job. They asked Louis if he can describe the feeling of being completely in the groove when on stage. It's a powerful feeling. You have to be careful not to milk it. You have to move on, reestablish yourself, and build up to that crescendo again. And can you tell when you're losing an audience? 
You don't have much more than 60 seconds before you can lose the audience. I don't care how famous you are. The audience is your true Geiger counter for laughter. If there's something radioactive there, they're going to go after it. I always think there's an electricity between you and the audience when you're out there, and you can lose it. Here's a great story I saw in the New York Post. In the late 1980s, Louis Anderson is at the Beverly Hills Celebrity Magnet Restaurant, The Ivy. Eddie Murphy and Eddie Murphy's entourage happen to be dining there. Louis Anderson pays their entire bill and tells the waiter, don't tell Eddie who it was until Louis Anderson left. Don't tell him until after I leave. I'm not doing it to be a big shot. I'm doing it because I'm from the Midwest, and that's how we would do it. The next morning, Eddie Murphy calls Louis Anderson. He not only offered thanks for the gesture, Eddie said, nobody ever bought me anything, but he also invited Louis to be on a movie called Coming to America. Louis said it was the best $660 I've ever spent. That's a big movie in my life. First big job. He used to give Eddie some advice, too, about stand-up. He'd say, Eddie, you're too dirty on stage. Be clean. You could be funnier being clean. You'll do twice the business. And he'd just look at me. In 2018, Louis told the New York Post, I love the anatomy of a joke. It's like archaeology. If you dig too deep, you miss it. And if you don't dig deep enough, you won't find it. It's kind of a crazy thing. In March of 2021, Louis opened up about losing 40 pounds. He did that via intermittent fasting. He said, I started the pandemic at about 370 or 380 pounds, depending on what I was leaning on. His plan was to retire his fat jokes, but said, I think I'll always be funny. He played Vegas in the summer of 2021, saying, I've got a lot of new stuff I want to perform. So I'm dunking my fresh comedy donut into a cup of coffee, a little milk, no sugar. He was caught off guard by how much he missed the stage during the pandemic. He said, when I had this taken away from me for a year, I realized this is such a big part of my life. You don't realize it when you're going through it, but I'm feeling it now. I've never been more excited about a new set than I am right now. In 2017, Louis told The Post that after Baskets, he'd like to return to TV again, but in a male role this time, he played the mother on Baskets. He said, I'd like to do a drama show, and I'd like to play a man again. I don't know if this role will translate to people seeing me as an actor. I do have a lot of people who want to meet with me, a lot of times because they love the character. I'm grateful I think people think, oh, he's such a good actor, which makes me believe I was worse than I thought. I must have been quite shallow before, but I don't hold that against anybody. Louis once told Vulture, I'm a descendant of people pleasers, caregivers, and comforters. I use my mom's adage, be nice to people, Louis. You never know what kind of day they've had before they've seen you. Louis revealed that when his own father was around 10 years old, his father and his father's sister were taken out of their home and placed for adoption. They were split up and never saw each other for 50 years, Louis said, because put up for adoption meant that you were put up in front of a church congregation and families picked you and took you. Imagine being with your sister and having her go one place and you go another. So I go, oh my God, I'm sorry, Dad. Forgiveness was easy for me when I found that out. And I miss him. I love him. I miss the grumpy, coffee-sipping person that he was. One time my dad goes, I hate that guy. And I go, you don't even know him. And he says, I don't need to know someone to hate him, Louie. Thank God for my dad. I'm still doing the humor. And in 2016, when Louis won the Critics' Choice Awards, he said to my mom, who raised 11 children, and my dad was mean to her. In the past, you've heard me mention the podcast, The Art of Bombing. Dan Bublitz hosts that show. I reached out to Dan. He had had Louis on as a guest, and I asked Dan, would it be kind enough to share a clip from The Art of Bombing podcast with this audience here? Dan hooked me up with that clip you heard earlier in the show, and this clip here from Louis that will play into the break. And then on the other side, I've got some fun stories from Louis Anderson. Uh, in an yeah. interview, I heard you say you started the first open mic you did was October 10th, 1978. Is that correct? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So this is just interesting fact. You you started comedy one day before I was born. So you've literally. Oh, been that's doing... so funny. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing, huh? Yes. You've literally been doing comedy as long as I've been alive. <laughs> so are you in your 40s? I am. Oh, you don't look 40s. That's good for yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I think comics mostly look younger than they are, but at least that's what I want to believe. Yes, I'll I'll go with it. That works for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's been working for wow, me. Wow, so you were born on October 11th. Yep, yep, I was. So crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I think on October 11th, I was thinking, should I keep doing this? I mean, I knew <laughs> I liked it a lot, but I did sign up right away and went back, I think, the next week. Where that did is. you grow up then? Right in Huron? Yep. Grew up right in here on South Dakota. I, I lived there till uh, about a year or two after I graduated high school, and then I moved to other parts of the state. So I actually, I started comedy way late. 
I didn't start comedy until I was 32, I think. I always tell people you can't wait long enough. It doesn't really hurt. You just get smarter uh, as you get older. Again, thank you to Dan Bublitz for hooking us up with Louis Anderson Clips. Dan's podcast is called The Art of Bombing. There's a full episode with Louis Anderson. Get that wherever you get your shows. From Thrillist, the author of this article was walking around a Costco in Las Vegas with Louis Anderson. Louis says, can you believe how busy this place is? The author writes, the place is buzzing with more people than you'd expect for a Tuesday afternoon. Although, to be fair, Las Vegas tends to have as regular a sleep schedule as a vampire with a coke habit. Louis grabs a shopping cart. I wave my wife's membership card in the vague direction of the security guard. Louis says, kind of a loose operation, isn't it? Louis's cart seizes up. Oh, God, what a cliche that I got the cart with the bad wheel. I think we should keep it. It's got character. They start walking around the Las Vegas Costco. Louis says, I'm a TV junkie. Are you a TV junkie? They're standing in front of a display of a 75-inch Samsung TV. Louis says, I want to get a new TV, but I just toy with it. I go, do I need a new TV? Instead, he picks up a four-pack of reading glasses from a display. What do you do? Throw them out after each book? You know who would have loved this place? My mom. Eleven kids, the newest stuff, the most stuff. It's clean and nice here. This is a Midwesterner's dream. Thrillist writes, we finally cross paths with some of Costco's famed free samples. We give the apple kale mango juice a pass. I grab a caramel, which proves inadvisable for interviewing. While downing cups of dried pea snacks, great job, author, we enter an aisle that looks like a meth chemist candy store. Every medicine imaginable sealed in huge clamshell packaging and stacked on the shelves. Louis reaches down, grabs three jumbo packs of Prilosec and tosses them in the cart. Says, these are $22, just one of these in the drugstore. On baskets that week, Louis' character Christine also buys Prilosec medication at Costco. Louis said, I like to make it real. I told them that for that show, I wanted to get real stuff. Louis then observes, if I didn't have my hat on, people would be talking to me. It's funny what a hat will do. He decides to do an experiment. He takes the hat off. Five seconds later, a man waiting in line recognizes Louis and asks him how he's doing. I'm good. Having fun? The man says, I was, till I got in line. <laughs> and from the New York Times back in 2018, what Louis Anderson can't travel without, the Times writes, Mr. Anderson travels for work around 100 days a year. Louis says, I love going to the Midwest, anywhere in the Midwest, because that's really my home base as a person. I grew up in St. Paul, so I love all that. The Times writes, Louis is not a light packer, at least partly because of the extraordinary number of odds and ends he brings with him. His suitcases are filled with spare buttons, Q-tips from a hotel room, a pick from the Dave Matthews Band, coins from different places he's been, and a pair of mittens. Louis said, I love when people give me stuff and I cherish it. I have a whole area in my house where I put fan art and fan appreciation stuff. These are things I've probably carried in my bag, maybe some of them for 10 years. I always go to clean it out, but I can never throw those things away. I think they really do give me luck. Some of the things, a daily devotional. Laundry detergent. The reason for that is I have sensitive skin, so I always carry fragrance-free laundry detergent because occasionally I'm out long enough where I have to wash clothes. I'm a Starwoods member, so I usually stay at them. But if I have to wash clothes, I'll stay at a Holiday Inn Express because I know they have a laundry room. I'll throw a load in and do it myself because I don't want people having to look at how big my underwear is. He would carry charms. His brother used to make those. A pocket watch. My brothers and sisters gave it to me and all their names are on the outside. My name is on the front. It means a lot to me. A nose hair clipper. The older you get, the faster they grow. It's one of those where you put it in your nose and it just sounds like a forest being cut down. I keep a thermometer just to keep my temperature because I'm a hypochondriac. A blood pressure cuff. I check my blood pressure at least twice a day. And a USB stick. But I don't know what's on it. Louis Anderson passed away at age 68. I'll have more about Louis tomorrow and during the week. Hey, I set up a page on podinbox.com where you can leave voicemails. If you leave a voicemail, I'll most likely use it on the show. I want to build community around the show. So it's podinbox.com slash daily comedy news. You can do it on your phone. Pretty straightforward. You do have to make an account, but it takes two seconds. You know, your basic email and password. Use the one you use on all your junk sites. But you can leave me a message there. I'll start incorporating them into this show. If you want to talk about Louie, awesome. If you want to bring up something else differently awesome, please feel highly encouraged to connect with me at podinbox.com slash daily comedy news. If you are just discovering this podcast, I do this seven days a week. Tomorrow will be a little bit about Louie and more of a normal episode. And then Monday you'll get a feel for what the show is like. I usually start with late night jokes and then a recap of what's happening with your favorite stand-up comedians. You can follow this show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your shows. Meet you back here tomorrow.